I repositioned my forcep because I felt I was losing the grip. So these hairs are crossing that way, this hair is crossing this way. So I need to separate the tissue in between them and there it is. Now it's free. Now my blade can go again deeper inside. I cut the, the epidermis the top first. So I could have gone to the left of this follicle in between, but I'm concerned that what I'm leaving on one side is way too thin and my tissue may break. So I made a judgment to go to the right. So I can go like this. I'm still moving. You know what we could do? We can make a um, wider view. Because the wider this goes. Okay. Okay, let's try this again. So I grasp the tissue, I create a traction. Can you see? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now these are crisscrossing, so I tease the tissue in between until I have better, they kind of free. And then since I can go and squeeze underneath, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a little bit of top. Once I cut a top, then I can, I can pull them almost apart because the tough part, the bottom part, yellow section, the <coughs> fat layer can be pulled apart. It's so um, soft, but the top you can't. So I'm freezing, freeing the top until I kind of work around. And I'm going extra slow to show you the movements. Make a judgment, going to the right or the left, I went to the left. See how my tissue is now getting thin. I'm going to reposition myself soon. Take a second grip on a tissue. And then decrease slightly the traction. My blade is not cutting anymore because I, it seems like I slide it, it doesn't cut as much, so I'm going to change my blade. <coughs> Whenever you're changing your blade, you always make sure you're putting it away from anybody else. It says top and bottom, I, I did I had it the other way. <laughs> Come on. A hard. Okay. You'll have a little container here to put your sharps. You open your blade and when you put it on your handle, you make sure that your blade does not rub the packaging because any little thing can dull the blade. These are extra sharp. What is unique about these blades is they are coated with silicone and Dr. Lim makes fun of me when I say silicone, but that's <laughs> um, I need to spray it. And um, so this is why these blades slide through the tissue better than any other blade. So grasp the tissue. So 
So my movement goes further there and then a kind of gentle slide here, further on the top. And now it's going to be an even sliver. So I'm going to finish this one and then I'm going to take another one. As long as I keep my hair, my blade is parallel to the tissue and you notice I'm going faster because my blade with the one cut, the blade is cutting, sliding through the tissue and cutting. The, the previous sliver, I had to work more, like I had to make more movement. It wasn't cutting as fast and as easily. Can you notice how thin her sliver is too? It's almost paper thin, it's one unit wide. It makes, some, it makes it that much easier for the cutters to cut those grafts out. Okay. And so then we're going to switch and do the dissection. Any questions during the slivering? For, regarding slivering, that's, that was clear, right? Okay, so it is a sliding and then kind of teasing, manipulating, sliding, teasing, manipulating, and so on. Okay, we'll move to dissection. I usually use the tongue blades that they're uh, moist. So tongue blades can be little warped. Um, so you want one that is not perfect. Because if it's a warped blade, you work against the curvature of the blade, you won't be able to cut. You see how it has like a concave and convex side. So you want to make sure it's a straight. I need a forceps. That one. How about this? It's in front of me. I didn't see it. And now, tongue blade has to be wet. I'm guessing this is where you see well, right? Okay. You just move something like this, right? Yeah, you can this Okay. So slivering. We see how the, if I orient and how do I need to orient tissue so that when I put my blade, it's easier. This is the easier to parallel hair follicles versus this. Is that so? I orient the tissue so it points that way. So when I put my blade, it parallels easily. I trim slightly. In a focus so. Is this better? Mm -hmm. Okay. You notice how much fluid I have, and you notice what I just did. I took my forceps and moved the tissue away, holding any, any extra tissue. I put my blade, and then I move this away. So. I envision this first seam. There's a one follicular unit here. There are two in the back. So I'm going to align my blade with the first one. It seems that this one is transected, but I'm just going to examine it. See, my blade is still, and I can remove the graft because the blade it just went straight down. This one looks like transected, and it doesn't have much tissue, it doesn't have a viable follicle. So I'm going to say that this one is not, they're too transected, the bulb's missing, right? So this is my questionable, we can discuss about this later. So now I have an extra tissue on this side, I need to trim this and then I see that there are two follicular units, so I have to make sure that I don't cut through them. So I'm going to examine this on the other side to see where these hairs are going, if they're going this way or going that way. So I need to adjust my blade accordingly. So first I can do, sometimes you trim from both sides. I'm going to adjust my blade to cut the extra tissue on this side. I'm going to press the blade 
and I'm going to remove this tissue away. This way? Then I'm going to rotate this specific sliver. And I'm going to examine it's a white hair a little bit. So I'm going to position my blade again close to the follicular on it. And now I have a minimal tissue to trim. I have two groupings of hair, one and two. So I'm going to cut in between two of them. I'm going to hold. Let's get down just a bit. Can you see this group? Is this good? Yeah. Can you see there are two groupings? I'm going to hold by one grouping. I'm going to position my blade in between the two. My tip of the blade is always a little bit higher than the tissue. And then I'm going to go straight down. And these are now two separate. So I'm going to hold this one. I'm going to trim anything that I need to trim extra. This here on the top is transected. And I have two choices. I can cut it out, removing that one. And now I have to do more trimming. And this is a two hair follicle unit because it has a white hair. There's a little hair here on the side and then a second there. And I'm going to put it in an air bubble. I won't have you trim your graft at the beginning too much, but I want you to have a consistent shape and size. Continue with this one. Clean this way and put my graft together. Then I'm going to continue. I need to spray because I'm seeing that there's, I don't usually when I'm when everything is moist, I can see the shine from the s liquid. Trim extra tissue. Second cut is line up. I'm holding here. I'm still holding. I'm trimming extra here. I'm going to rotate my graph. So there's, once again, there are two follicular units, one and two. Hold it up a little bit higher. Higher on the board? Yeah. See, mm -hmm. there are two. Can you see two follicular units? Yeah. Do you always cut on a tongue blade? Or uh, do you ever transluminate? If I have a backlighting, I do transluminate. And then I make sure, so now when I'm cutting, make sure that my blade is not cutting through here. As you see how it's pushing them apart? Now I can separate them. I'm going to finish trimming one, then I'm going to finish trimming second one. My tongue blade is falling apart. And this is another. So the, the one, this one has a bulb here. It's not transected in, in. I don't, these are light hairs. And this one has a telogen hairs. They're dormant hairs. If you see, I can't see the shaft. If I rotate this, I don't see the shaft being cut. So it's embedded. So that tells me it's a telogen hair, which is a hair moving into dormant stage that is moving higher and you don't see the hair bulb. I'm not doing a good job in this. Let's get it to the side a little bit, where your sliver is. OK. Here. So I'm continuing. OK. OK, so what I'm noticing is, can you see what happened to the tongue blood here? It's falling apart. Can you see that? Yes? OK, so that indicates that I need to move from that spot. I shouldn't be working either replace the tongue blade, because if those particles come 
on a graft, uh, uh, get placed with the graft, they can um, create some like um, in inclusion cyst or the body will reject it and create a big pimple or infection. And so you have to make sure you don't keep those, th those particles don't go in. Yes, thank you. Here? Uh, up a little bit higher. Here? Yeah. Okay. So I held the graft. I'm going to rotate it. I'm going to trim the extra. And this is one my one hair graft. I'm going to show you one and two hair grafts. I'm going to bring them back in. You're going to see that there's a slight difference in their size. Can you see the difference in size? Mm -hmm. I need to trim this. And I don't like uh, I trim it here. So diff they're a different size. My blade is drying because I don't see hair, uh, don't see shine. And that's indication I need to spray it again. And then I continue. So once I sorted these grafts in their respective groupings, I work on a different microscope. It's called the mantis. I have some something with my eyes where I over um, converge them. So everybody is, needs to find what works for them. Um, but the microscopes are very important. So I'm not sure where my hair is going on this in this follicle on it. So you have to look at it from the other side. So from this side, I see better the tissue that I can trim away. And I see that there's a space, empty space between. So I'm going to line up. And I see that this hair is kind of curving. So I'm going to line up my blade, straight cut in. And I can remove the extra tissue. Then I'm going to line up my blade again. And with my blade, I'm going to push away hair follicles from the tissue and put the blade as close as I can and cut straight. Now I free this follicle on it. I'm going to move my. And there's once again, there's a grouping of these two, two hair follic follicle on it. In this specific case, I may keep them together. So let's say if we were doing crown, and Dr. Harris says I need just a larger graft, so I don't need one and two hair grafts, I'm going to keep these two together. And then I, I keep trimming. I want them all the same shape. Come on. I'm not doing. Hmm. I have to keep rotating, as you notice. So I can't. I can go a little bit closer here. The hairs are splaying. This here and that here. So I can take some. Another trick is I can take extra fat, pull it away, and then trim it that way. Now it's less pear shape, and this one has more hairs. Yes. Okay, good. Perfect. This is done. Okay. So now you're going to go in a meeting room.